I empathize. Um, so a little bit about variations in blood pressure, hypotension, low blood pressure, hypertension, high blood pressure. So um, these are generally defined um, with systolic and diastolic numbers. And sometimes the numbers change just a little bit, but the, um, the trends are the same. So last time I looked it up, um, hypotension um, was having a resting systolic blood pressure of less than 100 millimeters of mercury. And it's not at all uncommon for people to have hypotension. Now, mild hypotension to the point that it's low, but it's not compromising blood flow to capillaries, um, is generally associated with a long, healthy life. Although, if you get up really quickly, you might get a little lightheaded. That definitely happens. Um, so not necessarily negative, as long as it's delivering adequate blood flow to capillary beds, um, but sometimes can make you a little dizzy. Um, but severe hypotension to the point where organs are not receiving enough blood is called shock. But shock physiologically is circulatory system shock, not just, oh my. Um, so the causes of circulatory system shock. If we remember that the way that you regulate pressure is pump tubes volume, anything that impacts the pump or the tubes or the volume can actually cause shock, okay? Um, and it, shock is inadequate blood flow to deliver blood to capillary beds. So things that could happen to cause shock, and this isn't all of them, but it's an intro to them. Myocardial infarction will destroy the pressure generation of the pump. So decrease in cardiac output, like due to a heart attack. Massive vasodilation, like with septic shock or toxic shock or anaphylactic shock, massive vasodilation. Um, loss of vasomotor to tone. So your vessels should always have a little bit of tone to them because of the sympathetic nervous system, always keeping them like the wall a little bit contracted. Um, if you damage your nervous system, you can lose that and go into shock because of that. Um, if you release massive, massive around amounts of paracrine agents that are fine when they have a local vasodilation effect, but problematic when they have a body-wide vasodilation, vasodilation effect. That could be called like septicemia due to maybe a bacterial infection in the blood, the toxins, and then your immune response instead of causing a local um, vasodilation because there's so much of them can cause massive vasodilation. This is called septic shock or toxic shock. And that can occur because of like not changing a wound dressing, um, and increasing the amount of bacteria. And it can also occur in women because of improper use of tampons, toxic shock can occur. Or um, it could be there wasn't a pathogen, but your body is behaving as if there was one. Severe allergy, like massive, massive amount of histamine release because of a severe allergy. So many histamines that instead of being a local response to something you breathed in or you ate, you release so many of them, they get picked up by the bloodstream. This is called anaphylactic shock. Um, massive loss of blood volume. Obviously, you could go into shock because you were bleeding out, um, like hemorrhaging, um, or massive loss of fluid volume because of dehydration, like sweating, vomiting, diarrhea, all of the above. So any of these can cause um, massive circulatory shock. Now, depending on what's going on, if it's like hemorrhage, plug the hole, a lot of these you could add epi potentially, um, but we'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, um, hypertension. Hypertension tends to be a more chronic issue um, and um, it tends to damage the system because you've got all of this plumbing that you're really depending on and you're putting it under really high pressure for long periods of time. It's eventually going to wear out the system so hypertension, last time I looked it up, was defined as having a resting blood pressure of 140 over 90, okay? Um, and specifically, this is the important number. If this number creeps up, the other number has to creep up. This is the diastolic, which is the lowest pressure your arteries are under. If that one creeps up because you're clogging up your blood vessels or massively vasoconstricting, um, then the other number has to get higher because blood flows because of a difference in pressure between two points. So clog up your arteries and then your heart has to work harder to get over them. So a lot of times they say that hypertension is idiopathic, meaning that mm, it's a really complicated reason that you got it. 
but the most common reasons are reduced vessel radius due to arteriosclerosis or atherosclerosis and also vasoconstriction that can be due to stress. Now, it's usually asymptomatic when people first get um, the predisposition to hypertension or the high cholesterol that leads to hypertension. It's asymptomatic for 10 or 20 years. You feel just fine, but your doctor tells you your cholesterol is a little high or maybe your blood pressure is a little high or both. But what you're doing is if the pressure is high out here, your heart has to work harder. So you're kind of wearing out your heart. And then you've got your tubes under high pressure, which stretches them, injures them, potentially scars them, leads to more arteriosclerosis and more potential thrombosis, which is inappropriate clot formation because of the stretching and damaging of the walls. And the increase in blood pressure can damage some of your delicate capillaries in the body, including the kidney capillaries that are high pressure and the retina capillaries. Um, really easy to end up with blindness or kidney failure because of hypertension. And of course, it increases your risk of stroke, kind of for two reasons. First off, you're more likely to form a uh, clot inappropriately, thrombosis, and also more likely to have um, blood vessels actually damaged. So hemorrhagic stroke or um, stroke from a, a, a clot. So what are the risk factors associated with hypertension? Well, stress, right? Because stress causes both vasoconstriction and because of the aldosterone release, it'll cause water retention. Um, people of African descent have predisposition to hypertension, even with the same diet and exercise patterns, and that's genetics. Obesity increases your risk for hypertension because if you have more blood vessels, you need to generate more pressure to get blood to go through them. That's just you need to generate more blood pressure to get through the blood vessels that feed a big body versus a small one. Um, and then high sodium um, increases water retention. High fat increases arteriosclerosis. Lack of exercise. Exercise increases the HDLs, which light um, increases your um, lumen of your blood vessel, cleans out all of that gunk. Um, and smoking increases your blood pressure as well. So what do you do for hypertension? Um, the treatment, if you've got a hypertension and you're overweight, the first thing they'll tell you is lose weight because you'll need less pressure to get through fewer vessels. Um, restrict your sodium intake, moderate aerobic exercise, reduce your stress, maybe change the amount of cholesterol and sugar in your diet. And then of course, a lot of people stick skip straight to the drug treatments, which is, hmm, I don't want to do any of those things. What can I do? Um, what kind of pill can I get? Diuretics are commonly used for hypertension and that affects the volume. So remember pump tubes volume, that's how you're going to impact any of this. So diuretics will decrease blood volume and decrease blood pressure. Beta blockers um, prevent epi, they're a beta adrenergic antagonist from binding to the beta adrenergic receptors. And that will decrease cardiac output, um, both heart rate and stroke volume because of uh, the beta adrenergic receptors. And um, also, if you in decrease sympathetic stimulation, you will allow for vasodilation, same thing there. Um, and then calcium blockers, although we didn't talk very much about the um, smooth muscle in the blood vessels, there are calcium channels on those. And those will close the calcium channel so that the smooth muscle cannot vasoconstrict um, in your blood vessels. Um, and then ACE inhibitors, because of our ACE thing right here, if you can inhibit ACE, um, then you can inhibit ACE doing those two things, which is um, forming angiotensin II, which will cause vasoconstriction, and causing the aldosterone release, which will actually cause water retention. So there's a text box in your textbook over hypertension. Definitely worth reading. Okay.